OpenScan Tools offers several rendering modes available in the Home tab. Some modes are more advanced and will concentrate first on the most classic Intensity and RGB. If the scans contain both Intensity and Color, you can switch from one to the other. When in 360 mode from a station, only its points are displayed. If the point cloud seems too sparse or decimated, you can increase the size of the points. Note that OpenScan Tools automatically fills empty spaces up to a certain limit. You can adjust luminance and saturation parameters in RGB mode and brightness contrast in intensity. A very important option, the normals, they enhance perception and smooth out some of the defects. If you deactivate them, you'll see that rendering is coarser and noisier. This is due to the fact that the stations were set up with different exposures. If you look at this station, you can see that the wall is rather off-white. Whereas it's rather orange in this station. The overlay of the two gives this speckling. The box allows two clicks. The first click grays out the box and displays the first mode. The second ticks the box and displays the second mode. Personally, I prefer the second one. In the Visualization tab, you will find advanced settings, including an option to soften colors. I recommend leaving it checked. The further you push the slider, the softer the colors become, but tend towards monochrome. A correct value is often 40% for normals. There's also an option to increase the gloss. This gives a more metallic look. The modes just presented are the most classic and will suit most users. We'll now move on to advanced modes. Color mode applies a color to the intensity. This color can be modified. We'll move on to scan and cluster color modes later. Flat mode no longer takes intensity into account. If you remove the normals, you no longer see any relief which shows the interest of normals. Distance ramp mode displays a color gradient up to a certain distance from the camera. The range can be modified. In RAW mode, colors are not affected by intensity. The false color mode available for scans with intensity converts the gray range into a colored range. You can change the range with a slider. Let's go to 360 mode for a clearer view. False colors highlight elements. Note that lasers often operate at invisible wavelengths and false colors can reveal elements invisible to the naked eye. Color by normals mode assign RGB colors according to the orientation of vectors perpendicular to local surfaces. Color per scan mode assigns a color to each scan. The color of the scan appears on its marker and also in its properties. It can be modified. This rendering, which may not look very aesthetic, is useful to better see any misalignment of the scans. Now we come to transparency, 
which requires you to check this box. It makes point cloud transparent with the possibility of changing the percentage. The result becomes much more aesthetic in this color by scan mode. You've probably noticed these squares. The transparency reveals the octree structure of the scans. But as soon as we make HD images or videos, these squares will disappear. With transparency, certain areas with many overlapping points can create a white flash as along this wall. To remove the flash, you can uncheck the contrast enhancement option in the visualization section. The flash is gone, but the rendering is less contrasted. By playing with these options, you will find the mode best suited to your scans. Let's move on to the color by cluster mode. In the tree structure tutorial, we saw that scans can be placed in clusters. A color can also be assigned to each cluster. We are going to change the color of the first cluster. Cluster 1 containing scan 17 has turned orange. In this example, the three scans are in the same volume and the interest is limited. But if you have different areas, floors, rooms, this allows you to distinguish them by color. Let's return to the color by scan mode where I'll give you a little tip. If you have a lot of scans, it can be tedious to change colors one by one. But there is a magic shortcut, the K key. It changes colors randomly with each press. Use it until you achieve the desired rendering. False color mode is also pleasant to use with transparency. Let's switch back to intensity mode and look at the background color options. In the settings, you can change the background. Here too, a practical keyboard shortcut is available, the B key. It cyclically switches from black to medium gray, then white, then the parameter color before returning to black. Indeed, sometimes point cloud detach badly from the background and this is a quick way to improve visualization. One last option, negative mode. First, let's set the background to white. Now let's switch to orthographic mode top view. We can see that the rendering remains little flat despite the settings. The negative option solves this problem and provides better contrast. This will make it possible to produce beautiful black and white images with transparency.